leaving work, trying something new today. I'm gonna run with this. Six point nine three miles, eight minutes, ten seconds per mile, running for the first time with the Insta three hundred and sixty One X, and I am instantly in love with this device. But before I get into my thoughts, I want to go over some disclosures. This is a unit that was sent to me by Insta three hundred and sixty. They sent along the camera along with the run bundle, which included the selfie stick that I guess you didn't see me run with, as well as a memory card, a chesty harness, a head harness, a bullet time string, I guess that's what they're using now, uh, and this uh, neoprene case, which is really nice because these lenses, I'm just so scared that I'm going to scratch these lenses. So it fits nicely in there, and I'm very happy to have that for transport. Uh, but even though they've sent this to me, they are not paying me to make this video, and they're not gonna have any editorial control over this video, so they're not gonna be able to get a chance to see my thoughts or any of my footage until you guys get a chance to see it. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about this magnificent little device. It is an amazing little camera, and what essentially it is, it, it is two cameras that when you turn it on and start recording, it captures images all around it. And there's a couple of different frame rates and resolutions you can shoot at. You can shoot at 5.7K at 30 frames per second, uh, all the way down to 4K 30 and 3K at 100 frames per second, which is the frame rate that I chose because I'm just a sucker for slow motion. So I love being able to slow stuff down. You can also take pictures with the device, which I haven't really done too much of yet. But for those of you that are posting 360 photos and uploading them either to Google Maps or using that to post onto Facebook, that's something that you can also do as well. The real magic for this device though is not just the fact that there's two cameras on it, because I've seen lots of other devices that have two cameras on it, the GoPro Fusion, the Garmin 360. But what really surprised me and what really interested me in reviewing this uh, was some of the additional stuff that they're doing on top of the two camera technology. I mean, yes, they're doing a really good job of the stitching, so it's really hard to tell kind of where one camera stops recording, or not recording, but stops capturing and the other one picks up. That part they do really, really well. The other cameras in this category also do really well too. But the magic for me is uh, the way that they can delete or erase the selfie stick that I'm holding uh, while without making it look too obvious that the selfie stick was even there. So I posted a couple of clips to my Instagram story the other day, one of the clips being when I was running across the bridge. And one of the comments that I'd received was whether, and they asked whether I had gotten a new drone because they weren't able to see how I was getting the shot and it didn't look like I was holding anything in my hand. And so they thought maybe I had a drone following me across the bridge. 
A drone following me across a bridge in that part of Chicago would have definitely caught the attention of many levels of state and federal authorities, so that's not something I would recommend or even try, but getting that shot on this was really quite awesome. The other thing that they're doing that's really just magical about this is the stability. And I was blown away by the GoPro Hero 7's ability to stabilize footage. Even though it was electronic image stabilization, which I normally kind of dismiss, the way that they've implemented it on the GoPro Hero 7 was absolutely fantastic. They're doing something even more magical with this thing. I'm not sure how they're doing it, but the footage that I'm getting, even when I'm watching it at full speed, is just amazingly stable. I'm running with it, and yet the footage looks really good. And when they slow it down, it's even better. And it just amazes me how stable the footage looks, how clear of an image, even though I'm getting a 3K image all the way around and the amount that I'm punching into when I'm showing it to you guys in a 2D format, a non-360 format, is much lower than that. The image I feel like I'm getting is relatively crisp. It's punching way above its weight class in terms of the amount of clarity that I think I feel like I'm getting compared to the amount of pixels uh, that are in the source footage. So I'm really amazed by that. All right, just ran through the loop. First run with the Insta 360 One X. Not sure how the audio is gonna be on this guy. Of course, there's gonna be any wind rejection. Hopefully you guys can hear me. The other magical part about the Insta 360 One X is its flexibility. And so I've gotten very accustomed to flailing my arms around essentially as I'm running around with my GoPro. But with this, it's a little bit more stable. And in that part was really kind of unnerving and counterintuitive to me. But basically you kind of put the camera wherever you need it to be and use the selfie stick uh, to extend your reach. And you can look all around because you have the ability after the fact, once it's already captured, to then look all around your image and punch in and capture just the part you want. And you don't necessarily have to have it just be that kind of tiny planet gimmicky thing, which I think is pretty pretty cool, but something that I'll get really tired of very quickly, I think, and I probably won't do too much of, maybe like once a day uh, in terms of the videos that I make. But the real flexibility is that I can get angles that were really hard for me to get otherwise with just a GoPro and without having to stop, right? And so even if I combine a GoPro plus a drone, I feel like a lot of the shots that I was trying to get, I'd have to stop and set it up. And so especially with the drone, you gotta stop, take the drone out of my backpack, get it up in the air, and then once it's in the air, it's taking so long, I really try to fly it till the battery dies. So every stop is 15 minutes long. This, you just, you never stop, you just keep running. So that's amazing in terms of the flexibility, in terms of my workflow. But that gets to the point of, is this thing a gimmick though, right? So if I think the tiny planet thing is a gimmick, uh, and not gonna be that interesting after I do it a couple of times, what is this good for? I think it's not a gimmick because I don't think that the strength of this is in the 360 tiny planet. I think that's what gets people attention, right? But I think what's gonna keep them using this is the ability to then have that long reach and be able to look and pan and make those beautiful smooth transitions looking from running at my feet and then panning up, seeing my face and then the background behind me or turning it around and seeing the world around me as I'm running. I think those kinds of sweeping images are really the strength of this device and something that's been really hard for me to capture with a GoPro in a smooth way. Now, I have a lot more content coming up that I'm planning. I'm gonna try to compare using a GoPro with a similarly sized selfie stick, just to see if maybe it's just the distance that is giving me that extra stability or that extra smoothness, or maybe can I get the same footage from the GoPro that I already have? So that's a test that's coming up. Stay tuned for that one. Um, but so far, I just feel like this is giving me the shots that I've been wanting to get for a really long time, all while without having to do too much extra thinking or even slowing down. And so all of the footage that I got today I started on a run and I didn't stop until I got to the end of it. I didn't have to set up a single thing. Everything that I could do, I could do while running. Now that's not to say that this thing is perfect. Getting through some of the menus is really, really tedious. And there's a little uh, screen that's right here that is just about impossible to read in daylight. And I was outside today, overcast sky, so not even that bright. And I had a really difficult time trying to figure out, is this thing on? Is it even recording? I wasn't really sure. I wish there were bigger, brighter indicators to let me know that it's recording or something different going on with the flashing light that's on the on the bottom. The other thing that I really wish that it had was 
an easier way of navigating through the modes. So one of the different video modes that you have between just shooting regular 360 video, regular 360 video, that's kind of a weird oxymoron, is you could shoot bullet time. And they sent me this bullet time thing it was essentially a quarter 20 uh, connection to a string and I could whip it around like a, um, like a hammer. What is it? Isn't that what it's called in the Olympics? Uh, the hammer throw. So I could whip it around like that. But I didn't really think that I wanted to try that, at least not for my first run. So I just left it fully extended on the selfie stick they had given me and just waved my hand around. And I thought that worked really well. And again, there's where some of the software magic comes into play. I'm rotating the camera around like crazy, but because it's in bullet time mode, it knows that and it kind of figures out what it's looking at and creates this really smooth image without having me to have to lift a finger. So that was just absolutely amazing how smart this thing is. Again, bullet time maybe is a little bit of a gimmick, but ultimately it's this software that's behind this camera and the images that it's getting and the ability for it to do what it does so quickly and behind the scenes invisible to me, which is just absolutely amazing. Now in terms of the workflow, I'm getting stuff from this camera into the video that you just saw. It's a bit cumbersome. There's a lot of steps. Uh, I think for people that have been editing video for a while, you're going to find it really counterintuitive and a little bit frustrating. For people that have never picked up an action camera before, you're, I think you're going to really love it. And I think it's designed for that group. But also I think that the nature of 360, the way that you're making, composing a lot of these shots is I'm looking at it on my phone and then hitting play and recording. And I move myself around as I'm looking at the video that's playing back and it records that way. I'll go into a further, much more detailed how to and the exact workflow and some tips and tricks and strategies for how to run with this thing in another video. So stay tuned for that as well. Lots of great stuff I think gonna come up with this Insta360 One X. I'm super excited about it. Uh, very inspired just to have this thing and to think about the different kinds of shots that I can get on the same exact run commute that you guys have been watching like this entire winter long. It seemed completely different today because of this camera and not just because of the gimmicky stuff of Tiny Planet and that kind of thing, but just because it gives you a little bit of a different flexibility and just because it's so powerful in terms of the stability that it can create. I wish it shot all the way up to 120 frames per second because I like to make 30 frames per second videos, but I can live with 100 frames per second, at least for now in this version. So let me know if you have any comments about the Insta360 ONE X. Let me know if you liked it, if you preferred it, or if you prefer the GoPro footage that you've been seeing. Let me know that too. I'd love to hear some feedback in terms of what you guys think. Uh, I'm gonna be running with this and pretty much only this for the next couple of videos. So a lot more footage is gonna be coming, but if you guys hate it and think you guys, if it like makes you guys motion sick or something, I, you know, I could certainly switch back, but right now I'm just, Super excited uh, to try this some more. Uh, before I go for today, I wanna to talk about the charity runner for this week. I think today's the last day that she'll be the charity runner of the week. It's Allison Rose. She's gonna be running the Boston Marathon in just a couple of weeks, and she's gonna be raising money for Massachusetts Eye and Ear, a healthcare facility that aims to cure blindness, deafness, and diseases of the head and neck. I've already donated $70 to Allison's fundraising efforts. And if you'd like to learn more about what she's doing or what Massachusetts Eye and Ear does, feel free to check out the comments. I'll have links down below. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?